story of young lovers defying the wishes of their parents is as old as Romeo and Juliet and as new as today. The next story involves an ill-fated love revenge and things that go bump in the night. And as you'll see at the conclusion of our story, Romeo and Juliet were never like this. Just ask the neighbors. I love your eyes. I do. <laughs> now, I'm no busybody, but when two kids are carrying on in broad daylight, how can you help but look? Especially when you live next door. That's all right, Tom. You're welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. Tiffany was only 16 years old, and it was no secret her father didn't like that young man with the piercing eyes. I don't want you spending so much time with that boy. Daddy, just give me a ride home from the library. I don't care. When I ask you to do something, I expect you to listen. Here you go again. I think I have reason to be concerned when my daughter's seeing a criminal. She is not a criminal. He stole a car. That was like three years ago, so we made a mistake. It's not like he's done anything wrong since then. But you don't trust anybody anymore, especially me. That night, there would be sounds coming from the Wilson house that the whole neighborhood would hear. Honey, you okay? Just great. She's gonna be fine. Yeah, I know. Who was that? It sounds like it's coming from your room. What's going Just on? Stay there. I'm gonna check it out. Dad? Dad, are you okay? Daniel? Nothing would turn off. I had to unplug everything in your room. Hey, maybe it was just a short. The Wilsons had a habit of keeping their windows open, and the sound carried around that place, so I couldn't help hearing something else a few nights later. box in here. I'm going to turn up the heat. It wasn't a dream, Mom, and you know it. Something's happening here, and I'm scared. I saw Mrs. Wilson working on the lawn the next morning. I was determined to find out what was going on there, and to tell her what I knew about that creepy old house. Come on. <sighs> Mary, hi. hi. Can I just ask you something? I thought I heard a scream from your house last night. Well, Tiffany had a nightmare. Oh. Mary, you've lived here a long time, right? Ever since I was a little girl. Well, have you ever heard of anything strange happening at our house? Like weird noises or sounds? When we first moved into this neighborhood, a banker owned your place. And he converted it into a boarding house. A woman, Mildred Bennett, and her son, Stuart, lived up there in that room. It's Tiffany's room. Stuart was the most handsome boy. He had jet black hair and the most beautiful eyes. They almost glowed. There wasn't a woman alive who wouldn't turn around when Stuart Bennett walked by. Sounds like Tiffany's boyfriend. Well... He had the bad luck to fall in love with the banker's daughter. The banker hated Stuart Bennett. 
He did everything in his power to keep them apart. I know what that's like. Well, did it work? No. Her father found out that the two were planning to elope. He was a powerful man. He ran Stuart and his mother out of town. Well, was this kid that bad? I didn't think so at first. But Stuart swore he'd get revenge. One night, he returned, and he set the house on fire. My mother and I got here just as he was shot by the police. He died right there on those steps. I'll never forget those eyes staring right through me. Some people say he still lives in this house. Are you saying we're wanted by Stuart Bennett? I'm not trying to scare you. It's just an old story. I'll catch you later. See ya. I guessed what Mrs. Wilson was thinking because I was thinking the same thing. Was there a connection somehow between Tiffany's boyfriend, Tom, and the ghost of Stuart Bennett? I happened to be up at 2 a.m. the next morning. That's when Tom brought Tiffany home and all the shouting began. Do you realize what time it is? You are never to see this boy again. I don't want to hear about it. And you, you are out of here. Don't bother. Your dad's out of control. I'm gone. After Tom made that threat, the Wilsons asked me to sort of keep an eye on their house when they were out. One night, I heard a prowler. I called 911 and then waited for the police to come. I couldn't believe it. It was almost as if Stuart Bennett was reincarnated and trying to set the house on fire again. I wasn't about to tangle with the teenager, so I just prayed that the police would show up soon. Breathe! Please! Don't shoot! Officer! I'm the woman who called you! Stay back! No one needs to get hurt. Now, turn around. Slowly. Oh, my God. Tiffany really inhabited by the soul of Stuart Bennett? And if she was simply a troubled teenager trying to exact revenge against her father, then how do you explain those glowing eyes? And what about the strange goings-on in the house? Soon after her arrest, Tiffany broke off all relationships with her boyfriend and things returned to normal. And by the way, there are people who say Tiffany is all grown up now with teenagers of her own. These same people also say she's the strictest parent in town. Of course, these are the people who believe that this story really happened. <laughs> the truth about this story will be revealed in our final act. Next, a tale of a bizarre meeting you'll never forget on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. <laughs>